News Nation is broadcasting from America's heartland right here in Chicago, but our network of nearly 200 affiliate stations has reporters on the ground all over the country. So we're going to take you across America right now to get a snapshot of what people are talking about in your community and in others' communities. Oh, let's begin in Kansas oh, City. Kansas Forgive City. me. <laughs> Where Chiefs head coach Andy Reid is in the hospital. News Nation's Marcus officer has more. Marcus, I apologize for the delay in tossing to you. It's been a long morning. What's going on? <laughs> All right. It's it's Monday. I totally get it. Don't get me wrong. We, we all have a case of the Mondays. I felt this way all weekend, so don't feel bad at all. Don't but feel bad. Chiefs fans, they've been worried. They've been concerned because their head coach, Andy Reid, is in the hospital. Good news there. He's actually in stable condition. That's the last update we got from the Kansas City Chiefs. He got to treatment uh, after not feeling well after the game. So the timeline kind of goes like this. Final whistle blows. Andy Reid tells medical personnel, hey, I'm not feeling that great. He gets checked out in the locker room, addresses his team. However, he was transported from Arrowhead to the hospital in an ambulance to get further treatment. Now, the team did say this was very precautionary. They wanted to be sure that he was okay, but again, he's in stable condition. Players didn't notice anything amiss uh, after the game, during the game at any point. In fact, a few players were surprised when they were told Andy Reid had left via ambulance, but he said uh, the team had said that he gave a very passionate speech, addressed what happened on the field, which is another issue here in Kansas City that folks have been talking about. But the bigger story has been how Andy Reid is doing. We hope to get an update a little bit later today from the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, whether or not he spent the n a night in the hospital, uh, what uh, his plan for the upcoming weeks going to be, because we know he does not want to miss going to Philadelphia to try to get that 100th win against his old team. That matchup this Sunday, of course, when we get additional information, we'll bring it to you. But again, let's hope this Monday goes a lot smoother. Get this woman some more coffee. I need some, too. I'll send it back to you and see you. It wasn't Studio that Andrew. bad. It wasn't that bad, Marcus. I mean, come on now. You're giving me a hard time because it's my first day. It wasn't at all. I just want to give you some love. <laughs> thank you, Marcus. We receive all the love. <laughs> That's all good. Oh, thank you. Very Virtual welcome. hug. Virtual six feet apart hug. Midwest love, yes. <laughs> all right, thank you. Great job. I know a lot of dedicated fans love that update. Now we're checking in with News Nation's Jeannie Wynn in Grizzly Flats, California. This town just decimated by the Caldor fire, but generous neighbors came together yesterday to give back to local children who lost everything when their homes burned down. Our family has been in Grizzly for over 120 years. We had one of the original homesteads. Wearing Grizzly Flats strong t-shirts, Candace Tyler and her two daughters, Lily and Amber, are doing their best to do just that after losing everything in the Caldor fire. It's absolutely heartbreaking and devastating what has happened, not just to our, our home, but the whole community. Everything is completely wiped out. But now, These are cool. things are starting to look up for the Tyler family. Ashley's toy closet coming out of Reno brought 10,000 plus toys to distribute to the children who lost their homes. For Pioneer School District Superintendent Annette Lane, it was important to her to help out her community. I saw that there was a great need for students to have hope enjoy okay. whatever she gets from here today because it will be one of those things that they will have forever because it's the, start, it's the beginning of the new start for us. Ashley's toy closet brought enough toys for more than a thousand kids to take home. But it's not only toys that kids had to look forward to today. Warm winters coming out of South Lake Tahoe brought warm clothing, umbrellas, things for inclement weather. Even though the Tyler family lost everything, Sunday's event did remind them of one thing. We are Grizzly Flat strong. You know, this is so interesting. I want to thank Marcus and Jeannie for their reporting, but I had a friend just this weekend tell me that she donated a surplus of toys and school supplies to another woman raising toys and, and making sure that kids whose houses burned down mm -hmm. had the necessary things that they need, and, and there were a lot of tears. So there are a lot of folks just like those ones. We've had situations like this before. Children are extremely resilient. But, you know, uh, we, we, we all come together in times like this in crisis, or we try to, because we want them to have as normal a life as possible. And it has not been a normal year. So yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I, I know that children are resilient. That's so true. But it's just like you think about what we've been through yeah. the past year and a half for some people. 
on top of that, losing your home, it's just, oh my gosh, ima- unimaginable. Don't quite understand what may have happened either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, our, our home is gone. Well, what about my, my Xbox? What about my toy? Whatever it is that they have that might have lost. It's really tough for them to remember that when it's gone, it's gone. And yeah. well, you, you got to rely on people to help. Right, it's that fixation on the small thing yeah. rather than the big picture that the parents and the families and the community members have to think about. So it's so nice to see everyone stepping up and getting involved. Yeah. And coming together. And coming together. Which I can feel from here.